2,000 years after the departure of Jesus the Christ. The prophets are back to teach the real Jews, the 12 tribes of Israel, their true nationality. This is their campaign. The first question is, who was Jesus Christ? He was the son of God. Okay. What's the next one? Did he die and, and rise, rose from the dead? Yes, he did. Okay. And the last question is, um, is there salvation for white people? I'm going to bring the scripture out for you, all right? You tell me what that means to you, all right? Bring that Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the Lord's chief of the house of Israel. What that means to you, sir? Come close. I'm Yamagam, by the way. What's your name? Bishop Abraham. Oh, you're a bishop. Okay. All right. All right. So, what, that, what that means to you? What? How do you? Read it for a brother again. Yeah. Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the Lord's chief of the house of Israel. What that means to you? You on? Um, that means that um, he came unto his own, as it is written, but his own received him not. But to them that received him, to them he gave the right to become the sons of God, and to them that believe on his name. So what are you saying that Israel did not receive him? When he came, no, they didn't receive him. Uh -huh. um, and as a result of the fall of Israel, according to Romans, salvation has come unto the Gentiles. You're saying a lot there, right? Yeah. Well, get Luke 9 20 to prepare that. But you have to know, you have to know the history in the Bible. Okay. All right? The Gentiles, when you hear about the Gentiles being spoken in the books of Paul, he's speaking about those Hebrews, those Hebrews that were Hellenized. Okay. All right? They became Greeks. You got to know the history on that. Okay. I'm going to give you first the history on when we became Greeks. We'll go to Magdalene. Let me get the book of Magdalene. We became Greeks in the period, in the, in the, in the uh, we became Greeks during the Greek captivity. We, we adapted our ways to the Greek ways. That's why it's considering that we became Gentiles. My bad. We became Gentiles during that day. Let's let get that. Second. Second. Six. Second Maccabees chapter 6 verse 6. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feasts or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. So we're speaking about, this is during the, the Greek captivity. All right? It wasn't lawful for us to profane, I mean, proclaim ourselves to be Jews. Okay. All right? Okay. It wasn't lawful for us to proclaim ourselves to be Jews. All right? Keep going. And in the day of the king's birth, uh -huh. every month, they were brought by bitter constraint. So we were forced to celebrate birthdays, okay. which we're not supposed to do. I, 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 do you teach your congregation that they have to celebrate birthdays? No, no, no. That's good. All right? But we're not supposed to celebrate birthdays because it said we were brought with bitter. With bitterness, okay. meaning we knew that it was wasn't righteous. Okay. All right, keep going. By bitter constraint uh -huh. to eat of the sacrifices, and when the feast of Bacchus was kept, the feast of Bacchus meaning carnival. You see that going on a lot in Neeson Parkway. You see it in a lot of our islands, okay. Jamaica, Trinidad. They celebrate the same custom that we learned then. We still celebrate it now. Keep going. The Jews were compelled to go in procession to Bacchus carrying ivy. So we were forced to go in procession out the idols. Okay? Keep going. Moreover, there went out a decree to the neighbors, neighbor, excuse me. Moreover, there went out a decree to the neighbor cities of the heathen. 
so not only in Greece, but in the in the neighboring cities, right? The decree was sent out by Ptolemy, right? Okay. To do something. Let's see. By the suggestion of Ptolemy uh -huh. against the Jews that they should observe the same fashion and to be partakers of their sacrifices. So he forced everybody around that area as well for us to keep the same fashions as the heathens. All right, keep going. And whoso would not conform themselves, so those of us who would not conform ourselves, right, to the manners of the Gentiles, to the manner of what? To the manners of the Gentiles, so those of us who did not conform, conform to the manners of the Gentiles, let's see what would have happened to us. Should be put to death. Should be put to what? Should be put to death. And at that moment, you had a choice to make. You had a choice to make, right? You either choose life or conform yourself to the manners of the Gentiles. And at that point, our people became Gentiles or practice the ways of the Gentiles. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. That's right. Okay. Okay. All right. La okay. Last thing I want to say. Yes. Uh, um. So. Uh, what does it mean when um, John 3:16? For God so loved the world, that gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Is what you're saying that there's no salvation for whites? Because that's what I'm getting from you. First of all, why are you so focused on the white man? Um. Well, that's my question to you. Why the white man? Why you don't come over here asking about the Chinese, which also oppress you, feed you garbage? Why you don't ask about the Arab? who rape your people, still slaving them up to today. Why you don't ask about them? Why you ask about the white man? Our people need to get out uh, uh, the, the white man and try to save the white man, the person that put you in slavery, uh, who still got you in slavery. Right, right, right. 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 You know. We need to get him out of your mind. Try to find how you're gonna save your people. Focus on you. Bring it out. Bring it out. Bring it out. Amen, I agree with that 100%. But you see, the thing is this, uh -huh. um, that, um, I don't want to allow uh, um, being a respecter of a person to hinder um, God using me um, to preach the gospel to everybody. What that means? What that means, brother? What you you said there? What you said? What that means is that uh -huh. I don't explain want yourself because you got to be simple for the rest of the people, right? Okay. Explain yourself. Uh, what I'm saying is that. Um, I don't want to allow uh, a racist idea um, to uh, separate me from everybody who needs uh, to be free from sin, captivity. Um, Let me ask you a, a simple question. What is sin according to the, the person that taught you? What they taught you sin was? Uh, sin is... Sin, sin is the transgression of God's law. You're absolutely right. Now, you said... What you said about racism? I said, um, racism, I didn't say what I'm about to say, uh, but racism is um, evil, um, and me being a respect of a person would stop me and hinder me from preaching the truth to everybody in that need of salvation. Now the scripture says, let God be true and yes. every man a liar, right? Yes. So let's see if you agree with this scripture, okay. all right? If it's racism, okay. and if you agree with it. Okay. Let's, up. let's go. The book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 13. As it is written, Jacob. So as it is written, where? In the Bible, right? Jacob, have I loved. Who? Jacob, have I loved. So God loves Jacob as it is written in the Bible, right? Who's Jacob? The father of the 12 tribes of Israel, right? But Esau have I hated. But what? But Esau have I hated. What does that sound like, brother? Um, well, um, when it comes to, um, I should say, um, like hermeneutics and, and, and interpreting the scriptures, um, scripture interprets scriptures, and I don't want to take one particular text and uh okay so you don't want to take this particular text let's read it again anyway okay. all right romans chapter 9 verse 13 as it is written jacob have i loved so jacob the 12 tribes of israel right yes but esau have i hated read it again as it is written 
Jacob have I loved. So God loves Jacob, right? Yes. Loves Jacob. Yes. That's clear. Yes. But Esau have I hated. But, but, that's a big but. Esau have I hated. Okay. Hated. Right. Hated, brother. It says hated. Okay. It doesn't say he loves everybody. It says he loves e Jacob and hates Esau. That's racism. That's God talking to you, brother, so that you understand. Now give me um, Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. Let's see who God deals with. All right, because our people have a misconception, all right, a misunderstanding that you guys want to save everyone and salvation is not for everyone like the brother brought out. All right, salvation is of the Jews. That's it. It's clear cut. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. So instead of worrying yourself about what about the white man or anyone else, you should be concerned about yourself. Right. Because it's your people, the so-called blacks and Hispanics, who's being murdered, all right, oppressed, who's in the ghettos, who's getting fed drugs, right? All kinds, all, all types of um, STDs, plaguing our, our, our brothers and sisters. That's what you need to concern yourself about. Not what about the white man. The white man is in his glory. Right. All right. right? This is right. his kingdom. That's All right. Ours is yet to come. Right. That's so you got to worry yourself about your people, brother. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art a holy people. But what? For thou art a holy people. So the Israelites, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, who you should be concerned about, are a holy people, special people, set apart from the other nations. Read. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. Unto who? Unto the Lord thy God. So we're a special people unto God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people. The God did what? Excuse me. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people. So God chose us to be a special people. Amen. We're a special nation, brother. All right? He has chosen us. Read. Unto himself. Unto who? Unto himself. So he chose us unto himself. Just like, say, you have two children, right? Two or three children, and you have a favorite. You prefer one over the other. God preferred us over the other nations. That's, right. That's what you need to get in your head, all right? I got it. Christianity has destroyed you, brother. Read. Above all people. Say that again. Above all people. Hold up. Where are you reading from? Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. Doesn't that sound like favoritism? Racism? That's what it sounds like to me. Read it again. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So God says the Israelites are above all people, including the one you're concerned about, the so-called white man. Right. Who's the God, right. God of the Bible calls Esau, who he says he hated. All right? That's what you need to understand, brother. Now, you showing me a card. What does that card say? Let me see that card. It says, Israel Productions Ministries Church Security. Bishop. Oh, so you're a bishop now. Bishop Abraham Shetri Israel. Amen. All right. Amen. What qualifies you to be a bishop? What qualifies me? Well, here's your card. Scripture, um, in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 15, I believe it's verse 16, Jesus said, you know, I have ordained you. I, you have not chosen me, but I, have, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you shall go forth and bring forth fruit and that your fruit shall remain. All right, where's your fruit? Um, the fruit? Where's your fruit? As a bishop, where's your fruit? Because you can stay and you can look at us and you can see our fruit, the fruits of our labor. All right, all these men came to the understanding that they are the Israelites from what? From the teaching going forth. All right, so where's your fruit? Well, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. I understand that. Where's your fruit, I ask? Where's my fruit? Yes. My fruit is around. It's here in, in New York. All right, let's see the qualifications of a bishop. Right, First Timothy chapter 3. Okay, let's see if you Amen. fit Amen. the qualifications of a bishop. Yes. All right, Amen. according to the scriptures. Amen. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. This is a true saying. It's a true saying, right? 
So if you believe in God, believe in the Bible, this is a true saying because it's in the scriptures. If a man desire the office of a bishop, so if you desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. It's a good work. A bishop then must be blameless. So you must be blameless, brother. All right? I can look at you and see you're not blameless. Okay. All right? I can hear you from your conversation and know you're not blameless. Okay. Why? Because you're concerning yourself with the enemy. Yes. The enemy of your people. You're concerned with them. You want to save them. Meanwhile, your people is being killed. Your people is being destroyed. Our people are the ones that need to be uplifted. Our people are the ones that don't know who they are according to the Bible. Right. All right? Read. No. So, you're not blameless, brother. We're going to continue reading, though. The husband of one wife. The husband of one wife. Are you married? No. Okay, that's fine. You don't have to be married. But it says the husband of one wife. Yeah, that's a good question. Do you have a girlfriend? No. I just good. Move, I just moved because there's no such thing as boyfriend and girlfriend according to the Bible. Read. Vigilant. Sober. Of good behavior. Of good behavior. Given to hospitality. Apt to teach. Apt to teach. What do you teach, brother? What I teach. Where do you teach? Bowery Mission. Where? Bowery Mission. Bowery Mission. Who do you teach? I teach men of God, men who have an ear to hear what the Spirit says okay. in the church. And what, what, what do you teach? Do you teach salvation to everyone? Yes. Okay, so you're not blameless because as we read, God chose Israel. All right? Well, well, that, He's that, only dealing with... Let's go one, that's Psalms 147. Well, that, well, what you're saying is true, but... There is no it, but. It, 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 yeah, it is because what you're saying is not the scripture as a whole. You're not, you, you're, you're using one text to justify an ideology when all the scripture composed with that contradicts what you're saying. Okay, show me where God dealt with everyone. Uh, Psalms 147, verse 19. Show me where God dealt with everyone. Now let him go first. All right, read. The book of Psalms, chapter 147, verse 19. He showed his word unto Jacob. He showed his word, the Bible, unto Jacob. Who is Jacob? The father of the 12 tribes. Read. His statutes and his judgment unto Israel. Unto who? Unto Israel. No, everybody. Unto Israel. Including the white man. Unto Israel. No, the Africans too. Unto Israel. It's only dealing with Israel. He showed his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Read. He has not dealt so. He has what? He has not dealt so. He has not, 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 brother, not. He has not dealt so with any nation. Any nation. He has not dealt so with any nation. Only the 12 tribes of Israel, brother. So your doctrine is flawed, brother. You need to learn the truth according to the scriptures. And hold on. That's what we're here for. We have to give you clarification, understanding, and pray, and, and Lord willing, you receive it. You understand? Because if you call yourself a bishop, you must be blameless. You must be sober. Vigilant, apt to teach. Apt to teach what? According to the scriptures. Not according to man's doctrine, okay? Not according to your own understanding or your own emotions. You go according to the Bible. Because many of us, before we learn the truth of who we are, you understand? Some of us even have parents that's of the other nations. You understand? But God did not choose them. If your father is an Israelite, you are an Israelite. You have to go according to the scriptures. We got to put them emotions to the side. You understand, brother? Okay. All right? Read. He has not done so with any nation. And as for his judgment, they have not known them. As for his judgments, the other nations have not known them. They don't know the Bible. We know the Bible. Why? Because we keep the commandments. We are apt to teach. We are the true blameless teachers of the Most High. Because that's what a bishop is. It's a teacher. You understand? If you call yourself a teacher, you have to go according to the scriptures. Now go back to 1 Timothy chapter 3. Let's continue the qualifications of a bishop. All right, so, uh, want me to fit away him? You got a question? Go ahead. No, I got a statement. Um, Bruh. all right, save your statement then. We don't want to hear no statements. We want, we're here to teach you, brother, so that you can get the understanding. Well, I'm already taught. What you, you've been taught wrong. No, According what, to the scriptures, you've been taught wrong. Well, first, for, for first John two twenty seven says that uh, 
in the spirit of God abideth in you, you need not that any man teach you. What's the that, spirit? What with the anointing, the, the, the Holy the Ghost. Spirit? The Holy Ghost. Okay. Right. What's the Holy Ghost? According to the scriptures. The Holy Ghost is God. The Holy Ghost is God? Yes. Okay. Let's get the Holy Ghost so that you can get the understanding. All right? Because maybe you haven't been taught this. So we're not going to fault you for it. But after today, you're going to know the truth. You understand? Well, I know the truth. No, you don't. Acts chapter 7, verse 51. Ye stiff neck and I'm circumcised in, in heart and ears. Ye stiff neck, right? Hard headed and uncircumcised in heart, meaning your mind and, and ears and listening. All right? Read. Ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. Ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. So now let's see what the Holy Ghost is. As your fathers did, so do ye. As your fathers did. Who is our fathers? The 12 tribes of Israel. They resisted the Holy Ghost in the wilderness when Moses brought them the law, statutes, and commandments. Well, the forefathers, Read. The forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jesus. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? Read. And they have slain them which showed before thee. Excuse me. They have slain them which before of the... I'm reading. Take your time. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one. The just one is Christ, right? They prophesied of Christ's return. Read. Of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the dispositions of angels. Received what? Have received the law by the dispensations of angels. You have received the law by the dispensation of angels. The law is the Holy Ghost. You understand that, brother? The laws are the Holy Ghost. Was that it? And have not kept it. And have what? And have not kept it. Okay, so the laws are the Holy Ghost according to the scriptures and have not kept it. Those so-called pastors, bishops, priests, that's in the churches, they don't keep the commandments, all right? I have to look at you and see you don't keep the commandments. The commandments is written in my heart, all 10. Mark chapter 7, verse 21. And that's according to Jeremiah You're 30. going according to your own mind, brother. That's Jeremiah 31, Read. 31. That God said he would make his covenant with the house of Israel and Judah. After those days, he will write his covenant upon our hearts. And we should know him from the least unto the greatest. It's written Read. in my heart. Let's see what the heart is. What's the heart? What's the heart? Yeah. I'm not gonna answer that question. Why not? It's simple. Be because because the scripture says to avoid unlearned foolish questions, but avoid them. Okay. That's so, a foolish question. Maybe you don't know, so now we're gonna answer it for you. Let's see what the heart is according to the scriptures. Since you say the Lord is in your heart, all right. Let's see. The Book of Mark, chapter seven, verse twenty-one. For for from within, out of the heart of men, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. Proceed what? Evil thoughts. Okay, now I'm going to be simple. Does your heart think? Like the, your actual heart, does it think? Can thoughts come out of your heart? Yes. Out of your heart. I believe the that, The organ yeah. that pumps blood to your body. Thought, thoughts come out of it. Thoughts spring from it. It's simple, brother. The thought, the heart that it's talking about is your mind, all right? Your brain. That's, That's right. where the thoughts come from. That's your heart according to the scripture. That's, That's right. why I said you don't know the scriptures. You don't have the understanding. Read. That, that doesn't make sense. No, at all. from this day forth, brother, don't call yourself a bishop no more. You're not a bishop. That's right. Mark right. no. chapter 7, verse 21. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. Out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. The only place that thoughts come out of is your mind. Your heart is an organ that pumps blood. All right? Read. Adultery. What does proceed out of your mind? Adultery, fornication, murders, death, covetousness. All these things come out, come out of the mind, not the heart. The mind is your heart. Read. Wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness, and all these things come from within and, and defile the man. 
all these things come from within and defile the man. So now you have to get the true understanding according to the scripture, but they don't teach you this in the, in the, in the churches. Let's go back to 1 Timothy 3 and 1. The qualifications of a bishop, all right? Because if any man wants to call himself a bishop, he desires a good work, but he must be blameless, right? Amen, amen. Keeping the commandments. Are you keeping the commandments? Yes. You said they're in your heart. Your heart is your mind. That's not how you keep the commandment. Let's see. What, let's go back. Let's go to um, Leviticus. Let's see a, a commandment that you're not keeping that's very simple and that a bishop must be keeping. These men qualified to be teachers. Why? Because they keep the commandments. I'm glad you I'm glad we're on this topic that's right. because it goes Read. Right. Leviticus chapter 21, verse 5. Listen, brother, listen. They shall not make boldness upon their head. They shall not make what? Boldness upon their head. You shall not make boldness upon your head. Do you scrape your head bald? Yes. Okay, so you're breaking one of the commandments. No. See, As a bishop, right. you are breaking a commandment. See, see, that's where you're flawed at. And you understand How am I flawed? This is the law that's written in the Bible, because, brother. The, because the new covenant of the New Testament, that Jesus Christ came, the mediator of the New Testament, the new covenant, the Old Testament, the, the, the law written in ordinances and statutes according to Hebrews has been done away. But nevertheless, Jesus told the well, original... Show me in the scriptures where it says the Old, the Old Testament has been done away with. Hebrews chapter uh, 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 9, I believe it is. Uh, first four verses. Hebrews chapter 9. All right. No, I don't get it. Because let me ask you a question. Another question. When Christ was on the earth, when the disciples were on the earth, right? The disciples of Christ. Yeah. Where were they reading from? Where were they quoting from? The Old Testament. So how is it done away with? M uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Well, well see, the thing is... The, Matthew the law, chapter 5, law, verse 17, brother. You don't have the understanding. The law of sacrifices, the shedding of blood of bulls and goats, have been done away yes. because Christ, yes. his blood, has yes. fulfilled that. I agree. But the, but the rich young ruler said, what must I do unto inherit everlasting life? And said, Jesus said, thou knowest, keep the commandments. And he called it both stones, the Ten Commandments. So we are, as, as believers in Christ, we are to be and, and, and live in accordance and obedience to the Ten Commandments. Well, That's out of your it. own mouth, you said we have to keep the commandments. The Ten so Commandments. We just read, but it's you not read. just the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments are the foundations to all the commandments. So based on that, you're telling me... me my, is so based it? on is that, it? you're telling me... Rome, that no, no, the one in Rome I can, is 13. I, I can just tell by dealing right. with you, you're telling me that I, have to, that I have to obey the dietary yeah, law. I know that's what you're telling me. You have to obey the dietary yeah, law, the law of the beard, the law of the fringes, the law of, 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 um, the law of, uh, of, what do you call that? The, the high holy days you must be keeping. Right. Let me know. Yeah, let me see. Thirteen. And since we're talking about the commandments, the law, I'm glad we got on that subject yeah, because in the New Testament it says that okay. love working no ill to his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Romans so we are made perfect through love. Romans love chapter thirteen and law. verse nine. So how can you Romans say? Romans chapter thirteen, verse nine. For this. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Okay, so you said we only have to keep the Ten Commandments, right? Read. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. These are in the Ten Commandments. Read. Yes, they are. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, and if there be any other commandment, all right, it is briefly comprehended in, the, in this saying. It's briefly comprehended in this saying. Namely, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Love is the fulfilling of the law. So you have to be keeping more than just the Ten Commandments, brother. You understand that? Now, we read to you the law of the beard. I mean, the not bald in your head. And you said you bald your head. You're breaking God's laws. Give me Matthew 5, verse 17. Because you said the Old Testament is done away with, right? So let's see what Christ the sacrificial said. System. Read. Matthew chapter 5 verse 17. Think not that I come to destroy the law. Let the, let the brother get his sweater. Alright. 
Quote it again and read. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. So this is the New Testament. This is Christ speaking, right? Amen. Yeah. Think not that I, that I am come to destroy the law. Think not that I come to destroy the law. Don't think that I come to do away with the law. Where do you find the law? Where do you find the law? In Exodus chapter 20. The Old Testament, which you said was done away with. No. Read. I said. All the prophets. All the prophets. Where do you find the prophets? In the Old Testament. Exactly. Which you said is done away with. So read it again from the top. Matthew chapter 5 verse 17. Think not that I come to destroy the law. So Christ out of his own mouth said, don't think that I come to destroy the law. Read. All the prophets. All the prophets which the law and the prophets you find in the Old Testament. Read. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. He didn't come to destroy but to what? But to fulfill. He came to fulfill. What's another word? To fu uh, um, fulfill. Uphold. All right. Christ kept the commandments. Or That's why satisfy. we must keep the commandments. Or to or to Read. Right. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass. Till heaven and earth pass. Is heaven still here? You look in the sky, you see the heavens, right? Is earth still here? Obviously, because we're standing on it. Read. One jot. Or oh, one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law. One jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law. That's right. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org